Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the last session we have covered the pin diagram of the 8085 microprocessor. In this session we are going to learn about the typical structure of the microprocessing unit. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session, today we are going to learn about the typical structure of the microprocessing unit or MPU. Alongside, we will compare the pins of the 8085 microprocessor. Now, if you remember, during the very first session of this microprocessors and microcontroller subject, we observed the basic block diagram of a computer system. There I also told you, this is the microprocessing unit. Now, what are the different sections it has? Register section, arithmetic and logic unit, that is the ALU section, then it has the timing and control unit and the interface section. Today, we are going to learn about this typical structure of the microprocessing unit with respect to the 8085 microprocessor. So, let's begin with the register section. Now, coming to the register section, the registers of the 8085 microprocessor are broadly classified into two different categories. At first, we have the registers which are accessible to the programmers. Now, these registers are also categorized in two different classifications. At first, we have got the GPRS or the general purpose registers. These are of 8 bits and they are B, C, D, E, H and L. Well, these are the names of them. Individually, they can be used as 8-bit data storage and the programmers can use this for general purpose. Additionally, these registers can also be used as pairs like BC, DE, HL. When they are used as pairs, they are used as 16-bit storage. Basically, B is of 8 bits and C is also of 8 bits, so together they can facilitate 16-bit storage space. And the same can be stated for DE and HL. Now comes the next type that is SPRS or Special Purpose Registers. Well, these registers are also accessible to the programmers and we have got two different categories in this. First, the 8-bit registers which comprises accumulator, index register and status or flag register. Apart from these 8-bit special purpose registers, we also have some 16-bit special purpose registers and they are the program counter and stack pointer. Now, these are actually of 16 bits because they store the addresses. I hope you remember, in case of 8085 microprocessor, we have 16 bits to address the different locations both inside the memory also, if we consider the I.O. slash MBAR pin, we can communicate with the input-output ports. So, these are all the registers which are accessible to the programmer. Coming to the next category, that is, the registers which are inaccessible to the programmers. And here we have MAR, that is the 16-bit memory address register. Also, a few TRs, that is, the temporary registers. These are of both the types 16 and 8 bits. We will learn about all these registers, that is the entire register section in details in a different lecture. For now, we are just having the overview of the register section of the 8085 microprocessor. Now, once we are done with the register section, then comes the arithmetic and logic unit. Now, the ALU performs a set of primitive arithmetic and logical operations regarding which we will be learning in details from the next chapter onwards. Now, after ALU, we have got the timing and control unit. Now, this particular section controls and coordinates activities of various subsections inside the MPU and also the devices which are externally connected to the microprocessor. We will learn about this unit in more details in a later chapter. Now, after timing and control unit, we have the last section, that is, the interface section. Now, the microprocessor has a number of pins for communication with the outside world called system bus. This includes 
the address bus at first. Now till the previous session, we already have learned about all the different pins of the 8085 microprocessor. So can you figure out the address bus for the 8085 microprocessor? Well, the address bus of the 8085 microprocessor comprises the pins from 28 to 21, that is the pins A15 to A8, also the pins from 19 to 12, that is A7 to A0. And we already have learnt about them in details in our previous sessions, haven't we? Now the next component of the interface section is the data bus. I hope you remember the data bus for the 8085 microprocessor. Well, they are the pins from 19 to 12, that is D7 to D0. And we already know why the data bus is used. These pins are used in order to communicate with either the memory or the input-output devices via the input-output ports. Now after data bus, the final component of the interface section is the control bus. Now coming to control bus, it is subdivided into three different categories. At first we have got the memory and I.O. control lines. Now in this category, we have the RD bar and WR bar, that is the read and write pins. Basically the pin numbers 32 and 31. Then we have the IO slash M bar pin, that is the pin number 34. Thereafter, the pin number 35, that is the input pin ready, also falls into this particular category. Then we have ALE, that is the pin number 30. And finally, we have got the status lines S0 and S1, that is the pins 29 and 33. Notice, these all are used to control the memory and the input-output devices. We already have learnt about their functionalities. I hope you remembered them. Read bar and write bar, these two pins are used to read or write. And they are to be set or reset alternatively. That is, both of them cannot be zeros at the same time. Either this has to be zero, this has to be one, or this has to be zero or this has to be one. Similarly, if we talk about IO slash M bar, if this pin is generating zero, that means the microprocessor is going to communicate with the memory. And if this pin is generating one, that means the microprocessor is communicating with the input-output port. Then comes the ready pin, that is the pin number 35. This is an input pin, and I hope you remember what it does. Well, through this, the input-output device will let the microprocessor know whether it is ready for the data transfer. Then we have ALE, that is the pin number 30. It specifies whether these pins, 19 to 12, they are carrying the address, that is the lower order byte of the address, or the data. Finally, we have got the status lines S0 and S1, that is the pins 29 and 33. Using these two pins with the combination of pin number 34, that is IO slash M bar, we actually specify the different phases of the instruction cycle. So that's all about the different memory and IO control lines of the control bus. Now comes the next category, that is CPU and bus control lines. Here we at first have the reset pins, that is reset in and reset out. Clearly, the pin number 36 and the pin number 3. Pin number 36 or active low reset in input is used to reset the microprocessor, whereas pin number 3, that is the reset out output, is used to reset the peripherals which are connected to the microprocessor. Then we have the interrupt lines, basically the pins from 6 to 11. These are used to deal with the interrupts which can be generated and will be serviced by the 8085 microprocessor. Then comes the bus request and bus acknowledgement lines, that is, hold and HLDA pin. We are specifically talking about the pins 39 and 38. During direct memory access or DMA transfer mode, the input-output device will have to generate the hold request. And receiving this request, 
if the microprocessor has nothing else to do, it is going to release the control of the bus. That is, these pins, right? And once the control is released by the 8085 microprocessor, then it will acknowledge the whole request by generating signals through the HLDA pin. So these are the different CPU and bus control lines. Let's now learn about the third category, that is the utility control lines. In this category, we have got the power supply lines, that is VCC and VSS. Now VCC or pin number 40 is responsible for the 5 volt DC power supply and VSS, that is the pin number 20, is the ground connection. Next we have the pins X1, X2 and the clock out. These are the clock signals. We are talking about the pins 1, 2 and the pin number 37. Pin number 1 and 2 are responsible for the clock pulse of the microprocessor. And if the microprocessor wants to synchronize the peripheral devices, it is going to give the timing reference to the peripheral devices through the pin number 37 or clock out. So these are the three different categories of control bus. Now did you notice something when I was explaining about all these three? Well, cumulatively, I was calling them control bus. However, when I was talking about them specifically, I was using the term control lines, wasn't I? Now, what is the reason behind that? Well, if you think about the address and the data bus, the data bus are bidirectional pins, whereas the address bus are unidirectional pins. However, coming to the control bus, we don't really have a proper direction. Some of them are input pins and some of them are output pins. So instead of calling them bus, which usually have a proper direction, we should call them lines. And that makes more sense. However, traditionally, they are called cumulatively the control bus. So now I believe from the typical structure of microprocessing unit, you can identify all the different things in the microprocessor 8085. So in this session, we learned about the typical structure of the MPU that is the microprocessing unit. And we also tried to relate all the different pins that we have learned so far with this typical structure. All right, people, that will be all for this session. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you for watching.